Yo, Powerful Nonsenses. Hello. We are back for another episode. In your ears. Episode 119. It's getting on. I love it. 20 next episode. So dude. close to 200. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but they, did you not think these episodes are like flying by? It feels like yesterday we shifted to video and went for episode 100. I think this year is flying by, to be honest. Mate. Mate. June. Unbelievably. June. We are halfway. halfway through the year. <laughs> What the hell has it's happened? It's right. holidays are coming up. Like, you know when, pe- when like, your parents are like, oh, time goes quicker when you're older, and you're like, no. <laughs> but that shit is real. My mum says it speeds up. It keeps going. It gets faster and faster. Mate, it already so... feels like a year's going in the blink of an eye. Like, <laughs> this is genu- well, it was, genuinely it was scary. It was your recently, Wayne. It you was. Get, you're getting on. It was, my We're birthday. now currently the same age. I'm loving that. We're rocking for, <laughs> for all of about a month. Yes, but I will a take month, A month and probably a week. Yeah, I'll take left. that. Left. <laughs> and now we are the same age. <laughs> but I'll never quite be as old as you. True. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I, like, freeze myself and, like, hold back some years. Yeah. Let you go on a little bit. <laughs> that might come. Who knows? Mate, would you, would you freeze yourself? For what reason? <laughs> no what idea. benefit to stay no longer idea. or just to, <laughs> to keep keep beautiful or... out of context that question has absolutely no relevance. Uh, would you freeze yourself would you guys freeze yourselves yes would you freeze yourselves but let's yeah. know but would you if the technology was there so that I would on let's the basis say, let's say you find that you have some illness which can't be cured yet yeah would you freeze yourself in the hopes in the hopes, because there's no guarantee, in the hopes that you that they would find a cure and they'd wake you up. The problem with that is you might freeze yourself <laughs> and then you depressed and everyone around you is dead who you thought were going to care right. about you being like alive most, still. Most likely, yes. Or the world could just be in tatters and Trump could be running around. <laughs> <laughs> Getting political. But um, yeah, no, I probably wouldn't. No? No, I wouldn't. Oh, okay, interesting. The only thing I think... I think I would. The bit that I think people would do it for, I think, because my dad's like this, he's always like, he's so curious about the future. And I think as you get Me older, too, right? you get super fi- like curious of, oh my God, what would be here in 50 years' yeah, time? And, and as you get older, you're probably going, what am I going to miss? Yeah. And that's why I think it's the FOMO. It's the end of life FOMO. FOMO end of life FOMO. Exactly. Mate. Anyway, so yes. that's a complete tangent to what we're actually talking about. It happens. But yes, let us know. Would you freeze yourself? Hit us up on Twitter, at PN underscore podcast, hashtag freeze myself. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Genuinely, should, I want to know. Should we get on with the show? <laughs> yeah, so episode 119. Yes. Uh, we're asking the question. Deep. Are you earning more to live less? Mm. Uh, in the last episode, <laughs> we talked about like having control of your lifestyle, almost the uh, golden handcuffs thing going yeah. on. So we're going to do a bit of a deep dive into that. And whether or not we should be, you know, sacrifice what we should be sacrificing, if anything, or what are we currently or sacrificing? What are we currently sacrificing for the sake of the moolah, the wonga, the wonga, <laughs> the, the lolly? <laughs> Is that what they call it? That that's a, that's a, that was a old Cockney thing, wasn't it? Oh, lolly. I'm not too sure. You're not Cockney though, I'm technically. Not Cockney, are you? No. My mum is, but but I'm sure it was lolly. Well, I got I got that off uh, naturally. Really, not a very good source. He's gonna say bloody bed knobs and broomsticks. <laughs> the that. little kid used to refer to it as lolly. You got any lolly? Oh, probably not. But that's a Disney produced, in the same way that Mary Poppins was produced, and we all saw Dick Van Dyke's London, London accent. That was shocking. So maybe maybe not the best source. We'll go back and check that one out. Anyway, so um, so yeah, so first of all, let's talk about the actual issue at hand. Yeah. Right. So, do you want me to, yeah. So I think um, the reason we come up with this episode is because I do believe that so many people are working so hard, nine to fives, really long hours, just to earn that money. And it's kind of this a lot of this idea as well about staying in a job, get promoted. Everybody's trying to chase more and more money, as if mm-hmm. eventually when they have enough money, then they can kind of sit back and enjoy <laughs> themselves. It's kind of this mentality that once I have enough, then I can focus on life. Once I have enough, then I can focus on my health. Once right. I've got this covered, then I can go back and see my friends more often. I think what happens is that actually people are in jobs earning as much as they can and they are neglecting friends, they're neglecting their health, they're not got very good close relationships with family. Right. And so for me, I think we're trying to make this episode so people can just take a step back for a moment and just question that what we just said there. At what expense is it? You're right. working this hard to earn this much money because you've suddenly built up your lifestyle to that extent that mm-hmm. you need that much money or you might need more because now you're actually not covering the bills or the expenses every month. 
but what is what is getting damaged because of that? Right, right. And I think the thing you have to start questioning, the biggest question you need to ask yourself is why are you earning this money in the first place? There's the point where it's for survival and then there's the point where it becomes beyond survival because you've covered your needs. And I think that's the area where it can get difficult for people, particularly when it is about, you know, why? Because um, actually I was listening to the Art of Charm episode uh, I can't. I can't remember the name of the guy that was the guest on it. But the name of the episode is "If you're so smart, then why aren't you? Happy? Why aren't you happy? Yeah, yeah." And it was an amazing episode. I definitely highly recommend everybody go listen to it. But he talks about the happiness paradox, mm-hmm. right? Which is, and this is the thing that blew my mind, right? So the experiment was: you ask people if they encountered a genie gives them three wishes, what would they ask for? I think it was something ridiculous, like only 6% of people asked for happiness, Mm -hmm. right? Everybody else asked for things that would be on the path to happiness. Mm -hmm. And so what you end up doing, and I think this is very much the case with like the money that you choose to earn, is you end up going, okay, well, I want to be happy. What's going to make me happy? How do I get that? To get that, I need more money. And so you then go, right, the first step is to make more money. Mm -hmm. But then what happens is that amount of income normalizes over time. And so, and you build your lifestyle on the short term things Mm -hmm. just to kind of give you that nice bit, nice kick, that positive rush. And then your minimal viable lifestyle and your minimum costs each month go up and up and up and up and up. And so in the end, that amount of money that you've been chasing for a while actually isn't bringing you any closer to the ultimate goal of the happiness and so you start chasing more and more and more and more and more and you're getting further and further away from your happiness and actually what you end up chasing is the means to happiness as opposed to happiness itself yeah yeah i think that's a good point i think that's why people go for the lottery they think wow once if i win that because if i get that massive big win Mm -hmm. then everything's going to figure itself out Mm -hmm. you're going to have good family you're going to have the car you're going to have this that and that Uh you're going to have the house the mortgage paid but again you're just not happy you just have the money there so yeah i do think it's it's, yeah, it's a massive thing that people just need to question. Yeah, definitely. Um, and also, like, one of the questions that we've raised on our points here, what's the <laughs> rush? Yeah. What is the rush? It kind of goes back to our Powerful Nonsense Manifesto. Uh, you know, you want to be living for experiences. You don't want to be living to get as much money as you can in the bank so it can sit there and make you a bit of interest. Yeah, but I think a point I was just going to go back to, which is why I kind of cut short, because my brain was like, yes and no. The okay. thing is here, I think people try to earn a lot of money in the traditional way, and I think it's like you saying that your dad says all the time, it's really hard to get rich working for somebody else. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to go into this later on, but I do think like people say, okay, I'll earn more money, then I can save more money, then I can invest more money. But I think in that nine-to-five setting it's really destructive because mm-hmm. it means you're taking on so much more work, you're taking on so much more stress, and it means actually the hike in your value and how much you get paid isn't exactly that high, really, in a nine-to-five. Like it, yeah, I You say, like, you pop CEOs and stuff, maybe on, like, 100K, a little bit more than that. Some of them are. And then you're just like, that, again, in the general scheme of things, is not, like, now, especially as a London person living in London, that's not ridiculous. I think there was a no. graph of how much people earn averagely in London. It's not ridiculous after taxes, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So it's just kind of, for right. me, that idea that you think, well, I'm going to earn as much as possible, then I can um, save more money, I can go into yeah. investing. I still think it's a bit of a weird mentality to have when you're thinking about doing that in a nine-to-five and all the pissing about trying to kind of job hop all the time to get high little pays, little 2K uh, rises, 5K rises, 10K rises, slowly, slowly, slowly. And still, I don't think you're that much better off and you're not actually getting the things that you think that the job is actually going to get you in the long term. Right, particularly when you consider, as you say, the amount of work that you're going to have to do just to get that 2K increase every year. So how much does that work out at 1,000-ish And that's only in the same job. No, not, sorry, 100-ish a month extra. Yeah. Which, okay, yeah, it's, don't get me wrong, I'd love an extra 100-odd quid a month, but it's not going to be life-changing and it can be years before you can even get to that stage. And so you've just got to kind of keep weighing up that question of like why why am I after this money yeah and that's the thing I think when you think about money again we're going back to the money mindset I think money for a lot of people 
is not just money. There's a massive story that we have attached to that money, which is why I think with that uh, research that you were saying that people chose money, because to money, to, to people, money has a certain story that they've given it. Right. So some people say money means I can go out and party and find the girl of my dreams. Money to another person says I can get the house that I want and have the right. family. Another person, I get the car and people might give me attention finally. Mm -hmm. So everyone needs to question, which is why I think a lot of people are working so hard and doing these jobs, trying to earn as much money as possible because ultimately in their head, them earning 50 grand a year, 40 grand uh -huh. a year, 30 grand a year is a certain story behind it. And I think that's right. the key is that actually I think you need to go back and question, okay, I do want 30 grand a year or 40 grand a year. Then just sit down and say, why do I want 40 grand a year? A lot of the time people are going to like sit down and be like, I just want to show people that I can earn more than the average person and it means I can actually get the car and I can probably move out eventually. I can probably mm. save a bit more money. But then look, at you've just got to keep going underneath each of those it's layers. Almost, yeah, it's almost like money is the answer to the question, but you don't yet know what the question itself is. Yeah. Kind of, you're kind of going, okay, how can I, how can I, in, you know, what would make my life better? Mm -hmm. And you go, that, therefore money. But just because you've come to the conclusion that, oh, if I had a house... I'd be happier, therefore yeah. I need more money to get the house. Do you really need the house? Is the house what's going to make you happy? And then you strip mm -hmm. that back and you go, well, why do I want my own house? It's like, well, I haven't got much privacy or whatever. It's like, okay, well, ha where are you spending your time? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Are you spending too much time at home? Yeah. You can get privacy going to the park and going for a walk. If, that's yeah. what's, if you just need to get out of the house for a couple of hours, yeah. it's going to cost you a lot less just to go for a walk for an hour every day than it is to buy a house mm -hmm. and like, like again, <laughs> as an example that idea as well like the person who maybe earns 30 grand a year they could be really stressed working five days a week but there could be someone who decides to take 25 does three days a week mm -hmm. and suddenly they're freed up two days to probably work on the things that they're everybody wants good relationship everybody wants yeah. to be able to eat good food everybody wants to go out and socialize everybody wants these things but then now that person's got two extra days a week where they can focus on those things so right. they actually might be Again, Guy Winch, emotional nutrients, they get those nutrients in and then suddenly they've, those two days have actually gave them the things that they thought that actually getting that 30 or 40 grand a year would actually bring right. because, they, what you did, like they say, what you focus on grows. A lot of the time, the thing you want money for is because you have a focus, like you maybe want a relationship, so you want, you want to look impressive, you want to dress well, you want to whatever else. And actually, probably that having maybe two days off a week means you can go out to events, social events more often. You might bump into someone I think that's the thing you need to question, really. Exactly. So, I mean, the big, the big question, really, beyond <laughs> why do you want the money, is if you're going to earn this money, that's fine. But what is that kind of thing of if you're saying yes to something, you're saying no to something? Yeah. So if you are saying yes to earning more money, what are you saying no to? Mm -hmm. What are the costs of you having to work extra long days to earn that extra bit of money? Like, and weigh up the mm -hmm. pros and cons to both. Sometimes, sometimes the answer is money. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, everybody needs money. Yeah, but it doesn't. Money mean... is what makes the world go round these days, right? <laughs> so sometimes that is the answer. But at least take the time to weigh up why you want that money, and not just go more money equals yay. Yeah, and I was having a good uh, example of this. I was having a conversation with my friend. He comes to the gym with me on like Thursdays and Fridays sometimes. And then he basically got offered some work to do on Friday. And he was like, well, I've earned enough this month to kind of be able to cover my cost, pay the uh, road tax or whatever he has to do for his car, top up the petrol. And he said... Wait like, to show you don't drive, Jim. Yeah, I don't <laughs> drive. I can drive, I don't drive. And tax or whatever it is. The whatever, those, put the tyres on and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I was saying to him, and he was kind of like, I really enjoy going to the gym and I've been offered this work, but now I kind of like, I don't really need it. And I was like, well, then this is a prime example of where you're kind of saying to yourself, well, you might earn 150 quid, 100 quid for that day, but at the expense that you don't get to hang out with a friend, go mm -hmm. to the gym. Mm -hmm. When we go gym, we usually go for some nice healthy food after. And so it's that idea, like, at what expense is him deciding to say, yeah, I'll take that day's work. But then I said, question, the other thing you do is say, well, if you do go to work and earn that extra money on the Friday, does that free you up some future time? And that's how I work a lot in my uh, clients. It's all about, okay... If I get a couple of video clients, I'm freed up for, a, I've, that's bought my month back. I only do a few videos a mm -hmm. month and I'm good. Mm -hmm. And then that's how I see it as it's not like a sacrifice. I enjoy doing it, but I know that by doing that work, I've now bought myself a whole load of extra time back, which is time under my control on my terms. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's totally worth it. Yeah. Boom. I think that's a perfect place to go grab a break. Yes. So 
we shall be back in just a jiffy. We shall be back. <laughs> we shall be back in a jiffy. <laughs> So, we thought we'd just take a few seconds just to say thank you to our sponsor, yep. the University of Northampton. Huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Um, so, why should you check them out? Well, first of all, we're we alumni. Went we yes. went there. So, everything that we kind of deliver to you kind of comes from them in a way. Um, but also, they're not just about getting a degree. The thing we love about Northampton Uni from experience is the fact that you come out of your course with your degree, but also... There's so many options on the table. They understand that it's not just about going out and getting a job anymore. It's also about the possibility of setting up your own business and becoming an entrepreneur. And to top that off, (laughs) it's not just about setting up a business. It's about setting up a social enterprise. That's their specialist area. So if you're thinking of setting up a business, it can also be one that's doing good to the world and delivering social impact. So check them out, northampton.ac.uk. And huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Welcome back. Hello. Went Italian there. Nice. Shaking it up a little. You do throw the Italian in once in a while. Well, you know, it had been a while, so now was the time. Anyway, (laughs) so uh, we're talking about money and earning it and... Earning less to make more. That's the one. That was the (laughs) one. I was was thinking of some of the points. I was like, no, it's not that one. No, it's not that one. And then I I blanked. So thanks for saving me. Earning less to live more is what we're talking about. Uh, I had the general gist in my head. It's fine. It was somewhere. Um, so we talked about why we think it's a problem. Yes. And we've touched on a little bit of like what you can do, like weighing things up in your head. But let's talk some really practical shit. Actionable. Actionable stuff. Yes. Um, I'm going to start with minimal... Vo- I can't, still can't minimal say Minimal viable. I haven't done my vocal warm-ups today, and it's, it's really showing. You can do them now if you want. No. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Minimal viable living. Correct. Because uh, I think that's a really good baseline starting point. And for anyone who's probably listening right now, they're like, that sounds pretty fancy. What the hell is that? So, <laughs> uh, at its most core concept. And we made this up. W- yeah, we came up with this one. We haven't patented it. We haven't. We probably should. Don't tell them that because now some, we just some jammy gets going to go. We in. just stick a C in the next to it. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done, that's how it, it works. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Business advice, straight to you. (laughs) (laughs) So minimal viable living at its core is basically just stripping down all of your monthly expenses. And this is your living expenses, not business expenses. Your monthly expenses, just stripping them right down to purely what you need with a capital N, Mm -hmm. need. It's the roof over your head, the food on your table, and any bills and things that you need to function. Mm -hmm. That's it. Strip it right back. Yeah. And work out exactly how much you need per month to cover those needs with capital N's. <laughs> needs. Yeah. Um, so this is no luxury items. This is purely survival. Mm-hmm. Okay. Work out exactly how much it should be. And likelihood is, unless you're a rich mofo, <laughs> likelihood is it's not going to be all that much. No. Mine's about 800 quid-ish a month. So, so long as I earn 800 quid a month, living in London, might I add, uh, so long as I earn 800 quid a month, I can survive. Yeah. So that is an example of your minimal mm-hmm. viable living yeah. costs. Yeah. Yeah. So just really, as I say, just strip it right back and just work out exactly every single penny mm-hmm. what you need in order to survive that month. We've actually, I think we've got a whole episode on it. We do, we, we do. So uh, we'll link that up. It'll mm-hmm. be in the show notes slash in the video. Um and just go there and listen to that episode. We'll break it all down as to how you can work out that. But that is it in a nutshell. Yeah, and then I think it's kind of just going back to then figure out how many hours of your time or how much time does it take to earn that £800. Right. For example, for me, that could be just one video and then you saw it. And so all that for somebody else, that could be maybe uh, free graphics and mm-hmm. then I'm done. Mm-hmm. And so when you start doing that and you're like, oh, wow, I could do that in a couple of days. You're like, wow, so my £800 a month and a few things that I create or maybe as I say being entrepreneurial with whatever you might do you might sell a product how many products do you need to sell before you've covered that Mm -hmm. it might surprise you you might be like holy crap I only need to do you do voice work you might only have to do four or five voiceovers to sub for someone or even less and then it's done your expenses are covered and your Mm -hmm. month is yours now right well I only have to earn if it's if a week is four and a half if a month is four and a half weeks and mine's 800 ish I actually have to earn less than 200 quid a month yeah. To survive. 
a month, two hundred. Yeah. No, a week. Sorry, yeah, confusing me. Now. Sorry, <laughs> I'm getting my weeks and months confused. Yeah. Um, yeah so eight hundred quid a, a month, uh, four and a half weeks in a month. Yeah, that's yeah. less than two hundred quid a week. Exactly. So you could get one or two voice clients an hour each, and that's it. You're mm-hmm. covered. So I mean, don't get me wrong. You're not going to be living no life of luxury. Yeah, that's yeah. purely survival. But yeah. you know, you've got yeah. all of your bases covered. Yeah. Anything else, if you need to, you can strip it back. Yeah, and I think it's a good opportunity for people to really like audit their spending to kind of say, mm-hmm. where is my money actually going? Right. Because a lot of the time, you think that you need to earn two or three grand a month of whatever you might be spending. But if you really nail into it, and actually, that's why I love having like QuickBooks, you use FreshBooks, but I can see everything that comes out of my account. And you can see wh- where you're spending lots of extra uh-huh. money. For me, it's often food, like mm-hmm. going out eating and stuff like that. When you really nail into it, and suddenly you can say, oh, a lot of my money's been wasted on buying clothes or going out food shopping mm-hmm. or whatever else and then I think that minimal viable living just allows you to kind of really see the picture of where you're spending and then that means you can kind of make the adjustments so that you can buy back that time yes cool. Boom. yeah but you kind of touched on it yeah that auditing of the spending mm-hmm. it's so important because I think some particularly in the age of direct debit <laughs> although actually that being said I find it much easier because I don't carry cash on me anymore hmm don't carry cash on me anymore on the pure basis that I know I can track exactly where every penny goes Yeah. if I've not got cash carrying it. That's using technology. See? There we See? go. Another one of our values. See? <laughs> I'm so glad we did that manifesto. It's all <laughs> falling into place. Um, but yeah, so just keep an eye on what you're spending your money on, really, because as, as we kind of said earlier, your spending will normalise as you earn more. And then you'll look for a little bit more, and then that will normalise. And again, if you're going back to the minimal viable living, you can work out exactly what you can strip back. Mm-hmm. And so when the shit hits the fan, you know, well, I can cancel that, direct debit, cancel that, cancel that, mm. cancel that, cancel that. And then you're like, oh. and then just build back up again over time. Yeah, and so, then you can add bits in. I had to do the same as well when mm-hmm. I started freelance. I weren't earning nowhere near what I was getting, the first of all. And then slowly, slowly you build up. Mm-hmm. And then you can start adding things back in, but you don't want to get stupid. It's always just, I think, just having control of your money. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think a lot of people are just mindlessly earning, mindlessly spending. Right. And then they've got no life in between. Uh-huh. And then they're wondering why shit's hitting the fan. Right. And I think that's the ultimate thing. It's like, if you, want to, if you can control your money, you know what you're spending it on. And then you may be like, we're going to talk about soon is this idea of like, if, if Wayne's minimal um, income to, to survive per mm-hmm. month is £800, how do you earn that £800 as fast as possible so that your expenses are covered and everything else after that is profit that could go into holidays to socialising, to buying good food, to looking after yourself. Mm-hmm. All the things that really matter that actually are your life rather than being like most people who are tied to that desk nine to five, four, day, four weeks every month just to cover that minimal expenses and it's kind of like you're living the same day in and out all the time stressing 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 because you haven't managed your money really mm-hmm. i just come up with a great t-shirt idea good good we'll get it going <laughs> sorry the whole time you had that i just go i know you just grinning at me yeah, i thought I you was just, like yeah no i've got this really good t-shirt thought idea. you're just happy to see me i'm gonna tell it you later you'll be like no, rubbish shit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh so yeah so we've worked out how to strip it right back Yes. Right. We've worked out where our money's going. Right. Now we've decided, okay, that's great and all, but I still need more. Yeah. So what do we do about getting more monies? Again, I think, like I say, we know that if you're in a nine to five, you have a set salary. The only way you're probably going to increase that salary each year is by job hopping or kind of getting that, okay, you were a junior now you're just an executive and then now you're Mm -hmm. an office, whatever, supervisor, manager, whatever it is. And I think the good thing about entrepreneurship is like, I can set, if I want to go out this month and earn myself four or five new video clients, my salary can go up massively if I want it to. But then the same thing, like I said before, like at what expense, do if I do five videos next month, what am I cutting out of my life to do those five videos? Mm -hmm. Or what have you just got, again, Figure, about the, figure out the skills you have. We've spoke about this before. We've got a guide coming out on the freelancing um, episode that we did. And it's to kind of figure out what skills you have can bring you the most income or do you go out and learn new skills so that right. the most valuable skills currently in the marketplace, what are they? Learn what they are and go deliver them. Mm-hmm. Then again, you just free up, your, free up your time. I think as well, a lot of the time people, the shitty thing about being in a job is that you do your work and you still might have finished your work and be done and got nothing else to do and you're still in the office. The good thing about being freelance or self-employed or entrepreneurial 
He's like, you do your work. <laughs> Sometimes I could be finishing two hours of work and I'm like, that's all I need to get done today. Let's go play tennis. Let's go chill out. Mm-hmm. Let's go see somebody. Let's go read a book. Let's learn, et cetera, et cetera. And I think these things are so valuable. Whereas I just think if you want to earn more money, question why you want to earn more money and then just increase your value get the skills you need mm-hmm. and then suddenly that's it it kind of snowballs and because mm-hmm. you've been wise enough to keep your expenses low the profit you're making every time you want to push it a little bit is so much higher right. but also as well it's, it doesn't also just pertain to entrepreneurship as well like if you increase your expertise in any field bring it into the workplace you're going to become more and more valuable the caveat of course is that you've got to make sure that you ask for the increase yeah otherwise you will just get exploited for the yeah. skills that you that you bring to the table that nobody else has got but if you're seeing that you're you've increased your value because you're actively learning you're actively improving your skills mm-hmm. then make sure that that the workplace is recognizing that value through salary yeah, make sure that you're going out there. You're showing them like graphs. You're showing them how you brought right. value. <laughs> yeah, you can't you can't just walk into the office and be like, so I bring all this value, guys. Look how many books are on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to at least be able to back it up. But yeah. the point is, is if you can do that, you can get that pay rise. You can get that pay rise. Or maybe you just Probably say quicker than most people. Or you just say to people, you've got leverage now. If you're a hard worker and you're someone they don't want to let go, you say, do you know what I was thinking about switch, switching jobs? And they're like, look, we don't want to lose you. Mm-hmm. You're like, what can I do four days a week? Okay. Mm-hmm. You get the same salary and now you're working four days a week Mm -hmm. and then suddenly you bought yourself a whole day and like that means a lot. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cool. Uh, And then one final thing, which I think is kind of the crux of everything that we've kind of talked about, Mm -hmm. particularly as it comes to the day job, is money versus time. Mm -hmm. And just like, I think we've talked about this loads, but you shouldn't really ever be selling your time. No. Really. What you should be selling is the output Mm -hmm. and the outcomes that you deliver. So if you are being paid per hour, you, I think, just really reassess everything because (laughs) it just, it just doesn't, it doesn't work. The only person it works for is the person paying you. Mm -hmm. Really. Yeah. And think about these pay per hour jobs are like the bottom level of jobs there the minimum entry to get into is the question why you're trying to compete at the bottom mm-hmm. and you've got the ability nowadays with technology to like yeah. raise your game in whatever you do and that's not to say, that's not to say and it's not poo-pooing it because that works yeah. for some people I, I, I actually my day job because I'm a sidepreneur yeah. uh, my day job I do get paid per hour but for me the trade-offs for that yeah. have been worth it because for me it's not just about the money that I'm earning because if it was just about the money I was earning I wouldn't be there um, <laughs> yeah. it's the trade-offs and the benefits that I get from being in that job so yeah. that's not to say that you can't work and be paid per hour but just make sure that the reason you're doing it is for the right reason not to forget the pay because you're probably not going to get paid all that much working per hour, per hour. Yeah. certainly not as much as you're probably worth not something we advise no cool yeah. I think cool. We've I think a lot that's a good there. place to wrap up. Yes. Good episode, man. I feel like that was a good episode. I enjoyed it. Yeah, me too. More to come. More to come. So, talking of more to come, this is going to be a really tenuous link. <laughs> we need them reviews on the iTunes. A lot of people. I mean, was that an attempt at a Jamaican there, or <laughs> I don't, I don't know, know? I don't know what, what that was. was. Or you just need some I don't water know what that was. or you're having I a stroke. I probably need or... more caffeine. I don't know. <laughs> but we need them reviews because it helps boost us up on the rankings. As we release more episodes, more people will see them, and then we can spread this good information to as many people as possible. It was a very tenuous link, but it was there. It was there. Um, and also, if you're watching on YouTube and getting to see our dazzling new studio fun I was going to say faces but yeah well I mean that goes without saying right true um, hit the thumbs up and most importantly hit that subscribe button cool so you get all of our content to your feed we've been powerful nonsense oh I like that you've been listeners or viewers <laughs> see you later catch you next time <laughs>